Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the commanding officer, Captain Alcorn, welcome to the graduation ceremony for Officer Candidate School, Class 1-3, Tech 2-3. Over the past 13 weeks, the class team has been responsible for developing today's graduates to serve as professional naval officers worthy of special trust and confidence. The Class 1-3, Tech 2-3 class team includes class officers, Lieutenant Bruckerhoff and Lieutenant Westerhoff. Class Recruit Division Commanders, Senior Chief Petty Officer Igwe, and Senior Chief Petty Officer Clemente. And Class Drill Instructor, Gunnery Sergeant Thompson. Guests are encouraged to take photographs from the seating area at any time during the ceremony, except during the playing of the National Anthem. The order of events for today's ceremony is as follows. At 1300, Captain Alcorn, United States Navy, Commanding Officer, Officer Training Command Newport, and Rear Admiral Walker, Commanding Officer, Combined Joint Task Force Cyber, U.S. 10th Fleet, the guest of honor for today's ceremony, will arrive. Guests will be asked to rise for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the playing of the national anthem and invocation. The commanding officer and guest of honor will address the graduating class and administer the oath of office. The graduates will then be recognized through the presentation of their commission by the commanding officer and guest of honor. Guests will be asked to rise for the playing of the service songs and the final dismissal. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the national anthem and invocation. <laughs> Officer Training Command Newport arriving. Combined Joint Task Force, 10th Fleet, arriving. Ladies and gentlemen, Chaplain Fosnott will now offer the invocation. Let us pray. Eternal Father, strong to save, you have called us out upon the waves, united as one body in service to our country. We are warriors of the seas and protectors of our American way of life. May we never forget that we are called to lead and to serve. We thank you for our friends and families that have supported us through this journey 
Much will be demanded of them in the future. Lord, bless them with faith, hope, and love. Protect us as we travel to a new home, to a new duty station, as we go away from here. Go before us, and may we all do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with our God. We pray this in your eternal name. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, Captain Everett Alcorn, Officer Training Command, Newport. Ladies and gentlemen, Admiral Walker, distinguished guests, veterans, Officer Training Command Newport staff, family members and friends, and most importantly, the soon to be commissioned officers, Class 1 3 TAC 2 3. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. I'm excited to welcome our 40 newest graduates into one of the most challenging and fulfilling careers that of Naval Officer. To the family and friends joining us, I applaud you for the great work you did preparing these impressive young leaders prior to their arrival here. Your love, support, and encouragement has produced the remarkable individuals seated here. It enabled them to make sound choices, and we are grateful to these graduates for their choice to serve. They could not have gotten to this point without the careful guidance and support of family and friends. And on behalf of the Navy and a grateful nation, please accept my most sincere thank you to the graduates here today. As Commanding Officer of the Officer Training Command, I am proud of each and every one of you. You all had many other options than volunteering to serve your country, yet you chose this path. I thank you for your patriotism, your willingness to serve, and I assure you that a life of service holds many rewards and will bring you great fulfillment. You have completed rigorous military, academic, and physical training. You've overcome obstacles. Nothing was handed to you except opportunity. The opportunity to make something more of yourself, to learn, to lead, to grow. You seize that opportunity and today you reap its rewards. I congratulate each and every one of you on this significant and memorable achievement. It's now time to embrace a new opportunity to lead what is truly the Navy's most precious resource, sailors in the fleet. In the years ahead, your knowledge and leadership skills will be tested often. You will be standing watch and working alongside fellow officers and sailors around the world, around the clock. Know that you are doing significant and meaningful work for our country. Work hard. Learn the warfare and professional skills of your designator. Strive to be the best. Give your country 100% effort. Nothing else will suffice. The Navy and the nation expect the best from you, the highest standards of personal and professional conduct, excellence in leadership, and a strict adherence to the Navy's core values, honor, courage, and commitment. I applaud your accomplishments and perseverance. You're about to embark on a great adventure, one in which I hope you find both professional success and personal fulfillment. It will be unlike any job you have ever had, and regardless of how long you serve our nation, it will most assuredly be a time in your life which you will look back with much pride and satisfaction. Congratulations to each and every one of you. I wish you fair winds and following seas. It is now my honor this afternoon to introduce you to our guest of honor, Rear Admiral Darrell Walker, Commander, Combined Joint Task Force, Cyber, U.S. 10th Fleet. Rear Admiral Darrell D-Day Walker enlisted in the United States Air Force in 1985. He received his commission through the Aviation Officer Candidate School and was designated Naval Flight Officer in 1992. Operational tours include VS-32, deployed aboard the USS America and the USS Enterprise. 
Executive Officer and Commander of VAQ-139 deployed upon aboard the USS Ronald Reagan, and Deputy Commodore and Commodore of Electronic Attack Wing U.S. Pacific Fleet flying the EA-18G Growler. Shore tours include Sea Control Wing Atlantic in Jacksonville, Florida, Naval Personnel Command in Millington, Tennessee, Naval Air Forces in Coronado, California, Chief of Naval Operations Strategic Studies Group here in Newport, Rhode Island, Chief of Staff to the Chief Information Officer for the Secretary of Defense, Executive Assistant to the 11th Vice Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, and Executive Assistant to the 32nd Chief of Naval Operations. He's also Deputy Director at U.S. Cyber Command, and Admiral Walker reported as Commander, Combined Joint Task Force Cyber, U.S. 10th Fleet in June of 2022. His leadership is essential to the continued success of the world's greatest Navy. We are privileged to have him here with us today to share his thoughts. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming our guest of honor today, Rear Admiral Darrell Walker. Hey, good afternoon, everyone. How's everyone doing today? It's an exciting day, right? Ooh, yeah, yeah. Ooh, yeah, Navy. Hey, uh, first off, I'm going to kind of go off script here just a little bit. Uh, my heart started beating uh, when I heard the uh, gunnery sergeant start sounding off in the team as a former AOCS. I started sweating in my boots right here in my shoes. So uh, uh, I am trained by the Marines and, uh, and truly love what they do for our Navy. So really, it's, it's my honor to be here for you all today. And, uh, and honestly, it's a, for the 40 graduates here uh, in the front three rows here, uh, to welcome these men and women into the Navy's newest ensigns and to our stellar family of the Officer Corps. Thanks to Captain Alcorn uh, again for letting me uh, be here today. I really appreciate this. Uh, to Gunnery Sergeant Thompson, uh, thanks again to you and your staff for training these young men and women uh, and not only just the training staff, but also to the administrative staff that makes these days or it makes these days possible uh, for these young men and women. So today we're here executing long held tradition in the United States Navy. Generations of officers have stood in your place, uh, ready to swear an oath of service given by a senior officer. Now, you will, if you allow, excuse me, now, you will all won't remember a word I say today for you all in the, three, in, the, in the three front rows. I didn't remember a lot of words that were said by the senior guest speaker back in 1990. However, I was glad my family was there, and especially my dad giving me my first salute as a naval officer. I remember my classmates, my friends, and most importantly, the staff that had trained me for this very special moment that I was actually ready to become a naval officer. So it's okay, it's your day, it's not D-Day's. And you'll say, who? Who was that guest speaker? But remember, in about three decades from now, one of you will be standing in this very same position, giving a speech to future officers. So we celebrate our history through these gatherings, allow, acknowledge the steadfast dedication of the soon-to-be officers before us, and recognize the tremendous dedication of those seizing the opportunity to lead. To the families and friends of the graduates here today, each of you have shaped, inspired, supported, loved, mentored, and coached these officers to be before us. The achievements of these graduates today are shared with each of you, and, you can't, and we cannot thank you enough for sharing their talents with us in service to the United States of America. But your work is not done, because I implore you all to continue your support and love and guidance for the next years and decades to come in service. It might be hard to believe that your loved one only arrived just 12 weeks ago when seeing the competent about to be officers seated before us. The transformation is astonishing and you should be immensely proud to celebrate this historic achievement alongside your warfighter. You too are now a member of the United States Navy family. To the graduates, seizing the hollowed responsibility of leadership. You all have accomplished a tremendous amount and deserve to celebrate each of those milestones today. You are a critical piece in the Navy's next generation of, dis of difference makers. 
While, take, while taking a moment to reflect, I'd also like you to look on the horizon in, t- in anticipation of the challenges ahead of you. It's my belief that the most pressing of these challenges is a renewal of great global power competition. We have a true peer competitor that is married to the idea of might, uh, excuse me, idea that might makes right. They remain dead set on destroying international rules-based orders at every opportunity. We have another acute threat, bringing death and malevolent, malevolent uh, destruction on the European continent, shattering the peaceful post-war order brought by prosperity to millions. The United States also faces malign nation state and non-nation state actors who embrace asymmetric tools and attack vectors to bring harm to our forces around the world. They too demand your constant vigilance. This is, an, this is one environment at 10th Fleet we operate in every day. I can tell you we no longer operate uncontested and that the gray zone of warfare is waged across all domains in the global network every day. To compete in this dynamic and highly contested environment, our Navy will need the very best of our newly minted leaders like you all. You will need to be the best trained, the most capable war fighters to meet our sophisticated adversaries head on. You will be expected to execute your missions in these contested environments and you must embrace resilience in order to be able to fight hurt and succeed regardless of your de- designator. You must take care of our people in uniform and out of uniform. That means our civilian work fa- force. They are critical, the critical ingredient to our success. Never forget that. When I think of the epitome of fighting hurt, I think of Captain John Paul Jones. It's a name you should be familiar with, and if you are not, I'd like to just describe why I think of him in these moments. In the fall of 1779, Captain John Paul Jones assumed command of the American warship Bonhomme Richard, then led his squadron of five ships to the coast of Ireland. And if you're a study of history, that was a time frame in the heart of our nation's war of independence. The United States was fragile, and many of the superpowers at the time were not sure how the war would end. With the fate of the war at the, and the nation itself hanging in the balance, Captain Jones encountered a large merchant uh, convoy escorted by two British vessels, naval vessels, HMS Serapis and Countess of Scarborough, on September 23, 1779. The stage was set for, the, for one of the most naval and excuse me, one of the most important naval engagements of the war and for our naval history. The Americans were outgunned from the start and the fierce four-hour battle ensued, costing lives, costing the lives of nearly half of the sailors on both sides. The British appeared to be on the cusp of victory. Her commander called on Captain Jones to surrender and end the bloodshed. With his ship taking on water, actively burning, filled with dead and wounded, Captain John Paul Jones replied, Sir, I have not yet begun to fight. And with that powerful response, the captain turned the tide of the battle. He went on to attempting the boarding of the Serapis and defended her against boarding against the bottom of Richard. And by nightfall, with another U.S. warship arriving, the British captain was forced to surrender to the Americans. The Bonham Richard and Captain John Paul Jones paid, paid for the victory, with many of his hands lost, and the ship itself would sink the next day due to the catastrophic battle damage. Despite her loss, the American victory was one of the historians have pointed to be the convincing effort that brought the French in to support a group of young colonists in their fight for freedom which proved to be a critical ingredient in in the victory of our war. I bring all this up to you to say that look beyond K Hall. It's easy to be intimidated by the unknowns or things out of your control. As leaders, you will be expected to make the tough decisions and keep your team focused at their best and because things will be chaotic and they will. Most of all, 
They will look to you to give them confidence that they are never out of the fight. So I often emphasize that most, the most critical tool that we rely on in executing our missions these times are you. Look at yourself. You provide our fleet headlights to illuminate, deter, and defeat any bagged actor who challenges us. You give our sailors confidence to stand tall at their stations, ready to tackle any threat. While our enemies may think they already identified our weaknesses, achieve capabilities rivaling our own, and believing that they enjoy superior firepower, I can stand here today and confidently say, we have not yet begun to fight. So, congratulations to you all. Lead well. Welcome to the fight and the fleet. Thank you all. God bless our Navy and God bless this great nation we all live in. The graduating class will now receive the oath of office. Would all military personnel in uniform please come to the position of attention? Class 1 3 TAC 2 3, raise your right hand. I state your full name. I. Having been appointed an ensign in the United States Navy, do hereby accept such appointment and do solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, and that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, and that I take this obligation freely, without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. And that, I will well and faithfully and that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties, discharge the duties of, the of the office upon which I'm about to enter. Which I'm about to enter. So, help me God. so help me God. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. The distinguished graduates assembled will now be recognized by the commanding officer and guest of honor for their achievements while undergoing training here at Officer Training Command, Newport. Ensign Niedemeyer has been awarded the Chapel Clardy United States Marine Corps Physical Fitness Award for obtaining the highest overall grade in physical fitness while attending Officer Candidate School. Ensign Niedemeyer has been designated as a student naval aviator and has been assigned to Naval Introductory Flight Evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Niedemeyer is a distinguished naval graduate. Ensign Caldwell has been awarded the Rear Admiral Stephen B. Luce Award for obtaining the highest academic average while attending the Officer Candidate School. Rear Admiral Luce was the first president of the U.S. Navy War College from 1884 to 1886. Additionally, Ensign Caldwell has been awarded the Chapel Azure, awarded the Commander Jack Leavitt Leadership Award, having been chosen by his peers as the candidate who most inspired his class and personifies the highest standards of personal example, sound management practice, and moral responsibility. Ensign Caldwell has been designated as a supply officer and has been assigned to the Naval Supply Corps School in Newport, Rhode Island. Ensign Caldwell is a distinguished Naval graduate. Anton Pratt has been awarded the Lieutenant Thomas Edie Award for achieving the highest average in academics, military training, and physical fitness while attending Officer Candidate School. While serving as a chief gunner's mate in the 1920s, Lieutenant Thomas Edie assisted in salvage work on the sunken submarines USS S-51 and USS S-4, receiving the Navy Cross for each operation and the Medal of Honor for extraordinary heroism in rescuing a fellow diver on the S-4 on December 18, 1927. 
Anson Pratt has been designated as an intelligence officer and has been assigned to Information Warfare Training Command in Virginia Beach, Virginia. Anson Pratt is a distinguished Naval graduate. We will now recognize the remaining graduates. Anson Lay has been designated as a Surface Warfare Officer and has been assigned to DDG-66 USS Gonzalez, homeported in Norfolk, Virginia. Anson French has been designated as a Surface Warfare Officer and has been assigned to LHD-7 USS Iwo Jima, homeported in Norfolk, Virginia. Anson McPherson has been designated as a Surface Warfare Officer and has been assigned to DDG-83 USS Howard, homeported in Yokosuka, Japan. Anson Shane has been designated as a Surface Warfare Officer and has been assigned to LHD-4 USS Boxer, homeported in San Diego, California. Anson Boyer has been designated as a Cryptologic Warfare Officer and has been assigned to Cryptologic Warfare Maritime Activity 6-1 in Fort Meade, Maryland. Anson Boyer is a distinguished Naval graduate. Anson Snavely has been designated as a Cryptologic Warfare Officer and has been assigned to Cryptologic Warfare Maritime Activity 6-6 in Fort Meade, Maryland. Anson Huxon has been designated as a Surface Warfare Officer and has been assigned to CG-54 USS Antietam, home port in Yokosuka, Japan. Anson Maketa has been designated as a Surface Warfare Officer and has been assigned to LSD-46 USS Tortuga, home port in Virginia Beach, Virginia. Anson Stankowski has been designated as a Surface Warfare Officer and has been assigned to LSD-42 USS Germantown, home port in San Diego, California. Anton Agnone has been designated as a student naval aviator and has been assigned to Naval Introductory Flight Evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. Anton Alarcon has been designated as a Surface Warfare Officer and has been assigned to LCS-10 USS Gabriel Giffords, homeported in San Diego, California. Anton Amarine has been designated as a Surface Warfare Officer and has been assigned to LPD-20 USS Green Bay, home port in Sasebo, Japan. Anson Baker has been designated as a Cryptologic Warfare Officer and has been assigned to Navy Information Operations C Command in New Fort Gordon, Georgia. Anson Bearridge has been designated as an Information Professional Officer and has been assigned to Information Warfare Training Command in Virginia Beach, Virginia. Anson Brooks has been designated as a Student Naval Flight Officer and has been assigned to Naval Introductory Flight Evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. Anton Cantrell has been designated as a Surface Warfare Officer and has been assigned to LCS-26 USS Mobile, home ported in San Diego, California. Anton Chambers has been designated as a Special Warfare Officer and has been assigned to SEAL Team 7 in Coronado, California. Anton Deering has been designated as a Surface Warfare Officer and has been assigned to LSD-45 USS Comstock, home ported in San Diego, California. Anton DeBose has been designated as a Supply Officer and has been assigned to the Navy Supply Corps School in Newport, Rhode Island. Anton Fonda has been designated as a Supply Officer and has been assigned to the Navy Supply Corps School in Newport, Rhode Island. Anton Baku has been designated as a supply officer and has been assigned to the Navy Supply Corps School in Newport, Rhode Island. Anson Godshaw has been designated as an Explosive Ordnance Disposal Officer and has been assigned to Navy Dive and Salvage Training Center in Panama City, Florida. Anson Grandy has been designated as an Information Professional Officer and has been assigned to Information Warfare Training Command in Virginia Beach, Virginia. Anson Jarris has been designated as a Surface Warfare Officer and has been assigned to LCC-19 USS Blue Ridge, home port in Yokosuka, Japan. Anson Kasia has been designated as an Information Professional Officer and has been assigned to Information Warfare Training Command in Virginia Beach, Virginia. Anson Kwok has been designated as an Aerospace Maintenance Duty Officer and has been assigned to Helicopter Sea Combat Squadron 7 in Norfolk, Virginia. Anson Mays has been designated as a Surface Warfare Officer and has been assigned to LHD-7 USS Iwo Jima, home ported in Norfolk, Virginia. Anson Murray has been designated as a Surface Warfare Officer and has been assigned to LCS-19 USS St. Louis, home ported in Mayport, Florida. Anson Ordorle 
has been designated as an aerospace maintenance duty officer and has been assigned to Helicopter Sea Squadron 2 in Norfolk, Virginia. Ensign Razzo has been designated as a supply officer and has been assigned to the Navy Supply Corps School in Newport, Rhode Island. Ensign Reyna has been designated as a student naval flight officer and has been assigned to Naval Introductory Flight Evaluation in Pensacola, Florida. Ensign Robinson has been designated as a supply officer and has been assigned to the Navy Supply Corps School in Newport, Rhode Island. Ensign Saney has been designated as a supply officer and has been assigned to the Navy Supply Corps School in Newport, Rhode Island. Ensign Tanko has been designated as a supply officer and has been assigned to the Navy Supply Corps School in Newport, Rhode Island. Ensign Trant has been designated as a supply officer and has been assigned to the Navy Supply Corps School in Newport, Rhode Island. Ensign Trant is a distinguished Naval graduate. Ensign Woolfield has been designated as an intelligence officer and has been assigned to Information Warfare Training Command in Virginia Beach, Virginia. Ensign Miller has been designated as a supply officer and has been assigned to the Navy Supply Corps School in Newport, Rhode Island. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in recognizing the United States Navy's newest ensigns. We will now conclude the ceremony. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the playing of the service songs and the final dismissal. One, stand. One, three, stand. Two, three. Okay. Let's stand. Two. Two. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now conclude the ceremony with the final dismissal from the class drill instructor. Please remain in your places until after the graduating class has taken their class photo. And remember, the only authorized visitor locations are K Hall and Nimitz PT Field. On behalf of the commanding officer, Officer Training Command Newport, thank you for attending today's ceremony. <laughs>